Rajiv Gwalja on the dais, Rajiv ji. Uh, can I request uh, Vice President, Color Society, as well as uh, Durgaari to come on to the dais? Right at the beginning, let me apologize all of you, because generally this uh, late CJ Bumkar Memorial Lecture generally happens in the month of March, because uh, the birthday of Sri uh, Bumkarji is March 20th. So generally we organize this particular uh, uh, lecture in the memory of Sri uh, CJ Bumkarji in the month of March or by April. But uh, due to certain reasons, unavailability of madam, uh, we have to postpone this for a long time. <laughs> and uh, uh, that's why I think uh, I mentioned that I should apologize right at the beginning for this delay, per particular delay. But uh, from next year onwards, we'll see to it that it will be organized in the month of March itself, so that uh, uh, we'll have a few other activities also along with that. <coughs> Today, uh, let me welcome very first uh, uh, today's speaker, Sri Rajiv Goyalji, Senior Vice President, Technical Asian Paints Limited. Can I request uh, uh, Dr. Nagarkar to welcome him with a flower bouquet? May I request? Uh, Mr. Prakash Dapre, Vice President Kalasura, to welcome uh, Mrs. Priya Bunker with a flower bouquet. Priya, ma'am, welcome. Uh, 
And now, uh, may I request uh, uh, Dr. Girish Nagarkar, President Color Society, to say a few words, and then I'll just mention that thereafter, Madam has to speak a few words. Uh -huh. uh, pardon? Oh, that is good. Okay. Uh, Dr. Nagarkar, please. Good evening, friends. On behalf of the Color Society Committee, I heartily welcome you all. And it is our pleasure to organize this lecture in the memory of uh, Mr. C.J. Bunkar every year. And uh, here I would like to say a Sanskrit uh, shloka. Om nahi nyane na sadrusham pavitra miha vidyate. What does that mean? That, that means is there is nothing in this whole world as pure as knowledge. And uh, we all remember Mr. Bhumkar for his knowledge and also the thirst of knowledge. He always wanted to uh, learn about new technologies and uh, new developments in the industry. And uh, not only that, we remember him for his great work and contribution to the industry. And I feel uh, this is a good opportunity for all of us to cherish his memories. It is always our sincere effort to invite eminent speakers uh, for this event. And today it is our pleasure to have Mr. Rajiv Goel as the uh, speaker and he will talk on functional technologies in architectural coatings. I welcome Mr. Rajiv and I am sure that we all will uh, benefit from his words of wisdom. I am glad to welcome uh, Mrs. Priya and Jashan. Uh, and uh, I am sure that we all will enjoy uh, today's lecture. Uh, if uh, any of us would like to speak uh, in the memory of Mr. Bhumkar, you are welcome. But first I would uh, invite Jashan to speak a few words. Thank you. Thank you so much. Firstly, good evening to everyone here. I thought I will start off by thanking the Color Society and ICT for uh, consistently having uh, this wonderful event every year in memory of my grandfather. Then I felt that it's inappropriate for me to do that. My grandfather had two families. One was our family with the name Bhumkar and the other was the industry, the paint industry and of that in particular ICT, UDCT for him and uh, the Color Society were very close to his heart. So. Um, I think these institutes, these institutions have as much right uh, over him and his memories as uh, say me as a third generation uh, of his legacy. Uh, so I don't want to intrude that equation by saying thank you, though of course as a family, as his grandson, we do feel extremely grateful for the same. I've been actively thinking what are how really going forward um, we can take inspiration from a figure like my grandfather. Of course, if I start sharing personal memories and we all hear from the Color Society, from ICT, from the paint industry, start sharing our personal memories with him, we pro probably never, um, never have enough of those and uh, we'll probably run out of time. Um, but there are many people here, new blood from the industry, students of ICT who probably have never experienced an interaction with my grandfather, never met him in person. What is it that they or we all can actually learn from his memory? And I was struck by three things in particular relevant to today's setting and occasion. Of course, there are many but three things which I'd like to highlight. One is the unending importance of a formal education and uh, I feel it's extremely particular to mention the standing here in a great institution like ICT. Um, we see many success stories, we celebrate many rags to riches stories for very good reason because people work incredibly hard and make something great out of their lives. Uh, often that there is a trend today if you look at uh, Instagram and the discourse that is going on is that entrepreneurs don't play by the rule book, entrepreneurs break rules, they drop out, there's no use of a degree. Uh, I think my grandfather was a stellar example of the opposite, how it is absolutely 
wonderful to do well and also do good just on the basis of a formal education and that too um, from this this institute um, when my grandfather started our company it was from absolute scratch um, it was at a very trying time in his life without a house and with a family to support and all of those things and uh, there the the uh, the science that he really really loved and that he had learned really paved the way ahead for him and of course as they say the rest is history uh, the second thing that uh, is very related but it also goes beyond a formal education is his true love for learning i think you spoke very lovingly about uh, his his love for knowledge that's something which has really stayed with me and shown me personally and i guess all of us also the path uh, through the years um when we say that knowledge lights lamps and knowledge is a shining light i have seen seen that spark in my grandfather every single day till his last breath he was a true student um even in his 70s when he was 75 years old he was in hospital and just even a few hours before he breathed his last he was excited like a child with twinkling eyes on whatever the was the latest technology at that time and i do remember what it was it was it was lead free paints were just coming out and he was very fascinated on how to make paints lead free this was way back in in uh, 2008 2009 so uh, so this is um his was his love for knowledge and i feel that he never had a dull day in his life because of this uh his excitement uh, for knowledge and his thirst for it kept him alive and young from within uh, made him um very current and uh, and and uh, was his constant companion through thick and thin um the third thing now if i if for those who don't know my grandfather i probably spoke about him as a very successful and disciplined man who loved knowledge loved science so you probably thought he was this like very grumpy and serious soul and the third and last thing i'd like to say is that the main thing that i learned from him is to take your work very seriously but never take yourself very seriously for those who know him uh, know that uh, whether it was colleagues from the industry or even his students who he mentored uh, or us in the family everybody was always in splits around my grandfather i remember there was a particular color society function and i was very very young at that time uh, but i remember that uh, he went up on stage to give a technical lecture or something but then suddenly he broke out into a, a dance <laughs> in the middle of uh, middle of uh, the event so that is how uh, he was and in the end uh, people are keeping him in his memory not for as much i i guess as much for his technical brilliance but more so for um, uh, how they felt around him which was always very very positive which was cared about and valued so i think these are the three things that uh, that that on today's occasion this is how i would like to remember our grand my grandfather and this is how i think uh, people who don't know him can also learn from him so uh with this i'd i'd like to pass on uh, the dais back to the color society and i'm extremely delighted we could not have had a better speaker than uh, shri rajiv goel ji he himself has been a mentor to me since the last 8 years since i formally started uh, working in this industry um it, if if to today the paint industry is a place for um it's an aspirational space uh, it's a trending space it's a booming space and uh, a lot of that credit if you were to put it on one man then I, I, it would go to sri uh, rajiv goel ji so i'm very delighted to have such a figure speaking in memory of uh, my grandfather here thank you so much i think i'll i'll sit here only and talk uh, thank you uh, uh, mr bunkar i think along with uh, as a technocrat cj bunkar was management guru also that is what i uh, remember him because he is to uh, he uh, basically he was very soft spoken very soft spoken and very particular about whatever it uh, plan for now can i request uh, deshmukh sir to come forward and say few words because uh, you are the person who knows uh, cj uh, but uh, uh, far more better than anybody else thank you good evening all of you let cj bumkar is nana for us in office he was boss 
but in family we used to call him nana and he was a person who knows human behavior qualities very well he could judge the person who is the right to work and who will do the sincerity and loyalty till end and uh, i don't afraid to tell that among all the chemists at that time mr puranik he was to come but because of heavy rains he is not able to come but puranik and myself we both were he he was loving us very very well and after work hours he used to call us sit here we will discuss this we will discuss that means as everybody said he was very curious about new technologies new knowledge what is happening in industry and we have our own contact so we are just discussing and what can be done further not for only asian paints but for everybody for as a industry what we can do and he was a very good orator also once he is on stage he was so terrific he doesn't means nobody will believe that he was so great orator few very few people heard him few times but he was a very good orator and he has instrumentation knowledge instruments knowledge is was so deep we were also not able to we never heard few instruments he was mentioning in those days such a person who loved us very well and helped inspired ourselves and he asked us ki how to behave with people be polite be natural and be good at heart these things we learned from him and we adopted it for throughout our, our career now we are also on the same way 71 years now <laughs> uh, going on but we still remember whenever <coughs> few technologies or few problems are there we still remember first name is nana and with that we get some solutions we get direction automatically where to find the solution what you should read what you should experiment means these are not uh, logical this is not logical but some power through him comes to us and it helps on solving day to day problems also so guru what we say in marathi once you have that shraddha you get positive energy automatically i think i should not speak more because i will be emotional thank you thank you deshmukh sir for your kind words and may i request now mr shivaji durgaole to introduce formally today's speaker good evening uh, ladies and gentlemen it is my great pleasure to introduce uh, today's speaker uh, rajiv goel ji uh, mr rajiv goel is currently working as a senior vice president technology at asian paints limited mumbai mr rajiv goel completed his btech in paint technology in 1989 from harcourt butler technological institute that is hbti he completed his mba degree from james cook university townsville australia Mr Rajiv Goel started his career with Asian Paints in formulation development of protective and marine coatings and has worked in different geographies like Fiji, Australia, Singapore and other southeast asian countries around formulation development of all types of decorative and industrial coating he also has extensive knowledge around formulation for auto finish wood coating and color science during stint of overseas operation mr goel handled plant and has deep knowledge around processing and technology he played a key role in development of health and hygiene uh, range of products and wa waterproofing range of products in asian paints he has authorized and presented many papers in the area of waterproofing and coating and has 11 patents to his credit so please welcome raju ji goel with good evening everyone 
and I thank Color Society for giving me this opportunity to be here and uh, to talk on this occasion of late Sri Bhumkar because as Jason said or Deshmukh Saab said, he was a very, I did not work with him uh, when I joined the company, he was not there, but I met him a couple of times and uh, uh, one thing like you know which I feel like to talk about him is two things what Jashan also said that I think he has never ending uh, requirement to see for something new. Every time like you know what we call a quest for for having new thing whether it is paint, whether it is colorant, whether it is testing uh, Mr. Deshmukh was saying about his instrumentation knowledge. Today, like you know, when you meet a lot of professional, you see them expert in one area. But I think he was one person who knew about everything. It is binder, whether it is paint formulation, whether it is testing, whether it is instrument, very inspiring personalities. I feel very privileged to be here to talk on this occasion. Other thing, like you know, I was, when I was discussing about uh, what subject to talk upon. So there was option to talk about industrial coating also because a lot of work, as you know in India, a lot of work is happening in terms of infrastructure development, whether it is metro, whether it is airports, whether it is uh, roads, whether it is uh, mega complexes. So there is a lot of work happening there. And there are a lot of technologies which are getting employed there, which were not there in India earlier. And they are, some of them are in the area of construction chemical and some of them are in the area of coating. But then I thought it is better for me to talk about decorative paints because that is, that is the area where we are good. Asian paint today, 90% of the business come from the decorative uh, segment. And you will be surprised that uh, Lot of people don't know what kind of new work is happening in decorative area. And today, when, like you know, people may think it is political to talk about Mac in India, but I think for professional like us, it gives us huge opportunity to be part of Make in India, because that is where we can show our technological might and then develop something which is useful to the community and to the country. And when I compare India with China, see today, if you look at two biggest economy in Asia, it is either China or in India. And when you look at China and when you look at their patenting portfolio, it's mind blowing. I'm just going to show you some numbers. It's really mind blowing. And even when you compare those patenting numbers with rest of the world, they are multiple fold. When I look at those patents in India, it's very little work, particularly I'm talking about mainly from the decorative point of view. And I see that as an opportunity for us. And I am here in ICT, which is a premier institute for coating technology. I think that is something to, to absorb and, and think. See, today, when we go for campus interviews, Lot of people, they don't want to join technology. And I don't know why. So they want to go for MBA, they want to go for consultancy, they want to go for application industry. People don't want to come to basic research. And what I want to urge to the people, like and I saw some of the students sitting here, that I think that is an opportunity for us to create. Because I can tell you one thing, I will be retired by that time. But after six years, you won't have coding scientists to work in the industry. So don't look at today, look at after six years what is going to happen. And that is where I think we can make difference to the society, we can make difference to the industry and we can make difference to the community. So from that point of view, what I am going to cover today, I will show you that like you know, what is the uh, market today in India, uh, when we look at the coating market, I think it is one of the most interesting market in the world and that is why everybody wants to get into coating. Whether it is Billa, whether it is JK, whether it is Uflex, whether it is, you name it, like, you know, everybody wants to come into paint. And there is a reason for it, because people see a very good future. 
and uh, in terms of size i think it is it is huge it is 700 billion uh, rupees it's a huge amount and uh, there was a time during covid where like you know market was stagnant but after covid it just took by storm when we opened back i think and two three reasons which which like you know which were very evident to us was like uh, people stay home like you know they were work from home even today a lot of people are working from home so they want to have an environment where they get that office feeling when they are working from there secondly like you know in terms of decor people were not going out so they want to do some other thing like you know they get feeling of restaurant in the house they want to have a studio room so we got quite a lot of requirement of very specific very specialized paint which were very expensive but people applied at home so i think those opportunities are there everywhere and despite having like you know raw material prices were escalating that time but i think it gave good opportunity for us to make good profits so even like you know i can talk about asian paints uh, i think last 5 years has been phenomenal for us whether we uh, take volume growth whether we take value growth whether we take profits so i think in all area we have done quite well now in terms of uh, uh coating industry growth for next 5 years even at this base it is going to grow by another 43% this are the figure which are published in coating world uh 5 6 month back so i know it will be more than what i am saying but there is still a 43% growth on a base of 700 crore which is going to grow so i think that is a opportunity for us when we look at architectural segment when we look at architectural segment the segment is growing because there is lot of construction work which is happening in domestic housing area so there are scheme from the government there are public which is moving from villages to the urban area i have given some numbers where what we feel by 2030 almost 43% of the population which is staying in the villages is going to come to the cities and when they come to the cities it's a opportunity for all the coating industry so like you know i think in some way when competition is coming more and more players are coming it is opportunity for everyone because it is the market is going to grow the pie is going to grow so and more people are there i think for professional like us it become a very good opportunity to contribute and then create something which create our differentiation so why i am saying that jashan talked about knowledge and and we are talking uh, for late cj bhumkar so i think that is what i want to dedicate to him that from the knowledge point of view i think it's a huge opportunity for the technology sales marketing will remain the way they are they will keep doing what they are doing but what we can do i i see a great opportunity there when we look at the patenting actually it's very interesting uh, this i got it done for ourselves it's 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 a very confidential information but i thought let me share with the group here because we are all technology uh, driven people so what is happening that in terms of patenting i will show some numbers if we look at 3 4 years back china was going haywire in terms of patenting all the technologies all the areas and they were patenting almost 70% of the technology in china but now and i was checking with some of our council members and i asked them that why number of patent which were happening in china now they are not happening why they are going down so what was happening in china they were protecting quite a lot of technologies kal application so that they can hold it though they did not have proof of concept they did not have inventive steps but they did provisional patent so i know i don't know how many people know about the patenting but you can do provisional patent on the basis of some work which you have done which you have to prove later on you get some time between 1 to 2 years so what they have done 
year after year they have done huge number of provisional patenting and block the technology and then there were a lot of multinational company in china where they hired people and got that knowledge and then converted that into their formulation so that is how like you know a lot of new technological growth happened in china but for last few years what is happening i will just go to the so if you look at i think this side can people see this so when when you look at this graph so the orange part is the rest of the world and the blue part is the china patenting so if you look at 2017 2018 19 20 and 21 even during covid period the kind of patenting china was doing is is unbelievable but when you look at rest of the world there there is a growth but it's a very very slow growth maybe around 8 9% of the growth so what has happened in 2022 whatever technology they wanted to block they have blocked it and now they are not doing that patent so whatever number you see that 2095 is the realistic number and that is not for the full year maybe another 100 patents are there but now they have tapered from almost like 4000 to 2000 number and if i look at the patents in the decorative coating area they have gone from 666 to 853 so two questions come to my mind that why only 600 700 800 patents across the world if we leave china aside that is one i will show you the indian number also they are very less so they are there like you know in 22 i think it that number went up to 60 65 because this is half year data this is almost august so when i compare it, 2095 versus 50 so i see a very big gap but at the same time i see this as a opportunity for india in the decorative area because now what is happening and we have seen in asian paint when we launch a product even if that project product is 12 1300 rupees a liter people want to buy and they want to buy in large quantities not that like you know there are there are few people who will buy that kind of product so if market is matured enough to take those kind of product then why we are not getting into those kind of product that is one thing as a technical community i think we have to think and then we have to create that that technological development in india i was talking to professor manwar and i was saying that like you know we should create a forum where we ideate and then say this is what we want to take as a development these five things we want to do in this year these five things we want to do in next year so that there is a opportunity for all of us and then it create opportunity for the country and and for the whole industry now when you look at some of the areas where this research is happening and then this numbers show the ratio that ratio remains same china and rest of the world but the area where this research is happening is nano composite lot of work is happening and i think that is where the polymer scientists and the paint technologists they can come together and then do lot of work entry microbial coating uh, now it is little tapered down but lot of work is happening in that area post covid because if you look at clothing you look at uh, sanmica you look at plywood you look at paint everybody is claiming anti microbial some of them is like you know they are real some of them are just the clay but i think there is a science there is a technology which can create the difference in everything i was uh, i was traveling to be asian paint is now into bathroom fittings and i was uh, in one of my plant which make make toilet sheets and toilet is one area where i think if we can make those plastic sheets and the whole ceramic anti microbial it is going to be very big opportunity and that create opportunity for our biocide manufacturer sorry that create opportunity for our biocide manufacturer that create opportunity for our coating industry because some of it may go through coating 
if you apply a coating on ceramic which is baked at 600 700 degrees centigrade then it is it is a opportunity for all of us other area where we are seeing lot of development which is happening hello hello is it working yeah. can you hear hello hello now working so other area where we are seeing this uh, development is the temperature and the humidity control that's okay i can hold it so that uh, if you look at the temperature and the humidity control it is about the comfort so if i can create a coating which is applied inside the room where based on the see today it's very sultry very humid if i have a coating which balances my moisture inside the room and how will it come it will come either through like you know at a very preliminary level maybe i put some uh, moisture absorbent like uh, nano silica or i create a binder which is phase changing polymer based on the temperature condition based on the humidity it absorbs some of the moisture from the environment so like you know i think it opens up our head to think about many direction in many direction we can think how to do the development so that is one area where lot of work is happening and i am scanning lot of patents and some of the technologies which people are talking about are phenomenal they are like you know i don't know how useful they will be for the household but definitely for the industry for food industry where you have to maintain certain humidity condition if you want food not to go stale i think it is going to make lot of difference there self cleaning coating photocatalytic i don't know how many people anybody know about photocatalytic technology see what is happening today in india it has not taken off but i think it will come very soon and we also want to contribute in that area there is lot of pollution outside and if you look at some of the societies which are near highways where there is lot of traffic the amount of carbon monoxide the sox nox and carbon monoxide you absorb is unbelievable it is like you know sitting in a chamber whole day and there are coatings where you use uh, photocatalytic tio2 along with a binder system which can which can take uh, uv uh, rays because that bind otherwise binder will get degraded if your tio2 is photocatalytic so with those systems they convert all this carbon monoxide sulfur dioxide trioxide into a compound which can be removed and there is no hazard to the health so i think that is area and some of the countries like philippines like you know philippines is not very different than india this product is selling very well it's a very popular product there but in india we don't see it and i think as a leader we have a responsibility to work in that area uh, but this is a knowledge area for all the scientific community who is sitting here energy reduction today if i sell paint like powder coating or any stoving coating to europe where i can reduce temperature by 10 degree centigrade i get carbon credit carbon credit is like cash money so my formula may be expensive my product may be expensive but i get paid for the energy which i have saved and which that country will be saving but i don't see lot of work happening i think in india if you look at the energy cost it is as expensive as us or uk or europe it's not cheap and for coating industry i think that is one area where we can make lot of difference through polymer science by using different monomers by using a different cross linking mechanism either by uv or by by natural curing i think there is opportunity there sustainability is one area we have taken very seriously we are doing lot of work lot of companies are doing he is there from the jubilant they are doing lot of work lot of industry i think there is lot of knowledge but today what is happening when i make my coating sustainable then i compromise on the performance and my cost go up 
and Indian consumer, they want sustainable coating but without paying anything extra. So the challenge to all of us is to how to design a coating where I don't charge extra but I still look after my environment. Anti-pollution coating. So anti-pollution coating is mainly from the interior point of view. We used to have a product which we discontinued now. Uh, we used to call it Atmos where it used to absorb formaldehyde from the inside and for the people who don't know when you stay in a house you have wooden furniture you have carpets you have towels you have cooking gas so everything generates formaldehyde inside the house so when you are applying a coating which absorbs formaldehyde it is it is good for everybody who is staying in that house but here like you know for some of this concept the difficulty is how to demonstrate to the people so if you are charging five rupees more for that paint and if you can't show that where the hell the formaldehyde is there in the air and how it is getting absorbed they don't want to pay that five rupees extra so all this concept like you know they go for a toss but i think as people are traveling a lot of people are traveling overseas they get good knowledge, there is a lot of exposure. So I think with time, this technology is going to come to India. And the last is the color change coating. The color change coating is very popular in the area of industrial coating. Because if you go to the refineries, they use coatings when there is a hot oil which is flowing through the pipelines, the color changes to red. But now there is, as a decor company, I can tell you, there are a lot of requirements which we are getting where people want coating where they see different color at a different time in the day. Morning they see a different color, night time they see a different color. If you put, there are lot of fancy LED, LCD lights. If you put light, you can, you don't have to paint the room. Actually we don't want to get into that area because we want to sell paint. <laughs> but people want lights where like you know instead of applying paint, you put a light and then you change the whole look of the house. But I think it, it gives us opportunity to do a lot of work in, in the area of innovation. Now, when you look at five years back, so I try to see whether what is the change in the trend. So when we look at 2011 to 16 and in 70 to 22, so when we compare those five years, so this is how we see in terms of nano composite, from the patenting point of view, there is a growth of 3.3 times number of patents which people are putting. So what is happening, that nanotechnology, like you know, whether it is graphene, whether it is uh, carbon nanotubes, whether it is nano extenders, whether it is nano TiO2, whether it is nano emulsions, whether it is nano binders, they are going to come to existence. And if we want to survive in terms of unique identity of the product, I think that is the area where we need to focus. Antimicrobial coating is still like, you know, people are still, they have seen COVID, we all have seen COVID, there is still a lot of fear and people want to, like, you know, there is no panic. The difference between two years and now, that time, anything you can sell in the name of antiviral. Today, people are not mad. They want to see that how it is working, what it is doing. But I think there is a lot of requirement. We are getting requirement in powder coating for antimicrobial. Where like you know, we don't see any risk of bacteria growth. So in every area people want and there is a significant growth uh, in terms of uh, patenting. Temperature, humidity control, there is a huge growth. Again, because the environment is changing. And, and particularly uh, in European country, if you look at the heating cost and in the hot countries, if you look at the cooling cost, both are very, very high. So there are a lot of work which is happening in the phase changing polymers. So when temperature is down, these polymers, they get frozen and when it is up, they become liquid again and they transfer the energy accordingly to control the temperature of the inside the building. Self-cleaning, photocatalytic. Actually, I see one of the. I saw one of the uh, uh, product uh, in, in 
it was a prototype it is not a commercial product where if you apply outside the building and you throw mud on the building and you saw after 4 hours all the mud is gone it gets self cleaned and the the layer the top layer it get depleted completely and with light rain you get a completely clean surface so imagine like in a place like india and in mumbai like you know if you go around and look at multi story building and if you look at their exteriors it's terrible like you know it look so dirty there is mud there there are rust stains there there is dust there if if we can develop a product which is self cleaning every year you get rain and it get clean completely i think it's a huge opportunity a lot of work is happening in that area and it's a very new science because people don't use this tile acrylic emulsion people don't use vinyl emulsion it is all silicate technology which is very new to india but i think it's a great opportunity for the people who are into binders and into the coating industry energy reduction i don't have to talk about it i think this is a priority where everybody need to be aware of how to i say not for money i think our third generation will not have anything to enjoy if we don't do it so i think this is a area where we have to seriously look at whether it is through coat i am talking in a coating um, context but i think in any context we should look at opportunity where we can we can uh, we can reduce energy consumption solar generation see today uh, there is a opportunity where we can create coating for the solar panels where i improve efficiency of the power generation maybe by 10% i don't know and those solar panel they need to be replaced after a certain time if i can create a coating which extend the life of uses for those solar panels i think there's huge opportunity there and there are chemistry there are sol gel chemistry there are polymer chemistry where i can use them and then make a difference anti pollution coating again as i said there are polymers which absorbs pollution there are pigments and the additives which can make a difference in terms of inside pollution so there but only thing is these two areas sustainability if i look at worldwide lot of work has happened five years back but now uh, people are working on them because they are not getting commercialized so this problem is not there only in india except europe and china see china also has mandated uh, norms on the interior air quality so in china there is a lot of push in europe there is a lot of push in us in california there is a lot of push but if you look at rest of the area there is not not much push there so maybe there as a community or as a paint association maybe we have to influence government somewhere to to get into that area because it is going to be very very important to have sustainable raw materials and color change coating i talked about earlier like you know it was from the uh, from the industrial point of view but now since people are using it decorative it is growing almost at 2.6 times what we saw 5 years back so these are like you know these are some of the numbers i try to show that uh, in individual area like you know that i covered as a percentage so maybe i can skip so one thing i would like to come to this slide because this is very relevant to all of us so this is these are the areas where patenting is happening in india so there are there are companies and we are one of them where we are uh, patenting nano composite we are patenting antimicrobial coatings but if i look at the number the numbers are not very big i think we can do much more and for country like india like you know if i look at 2022 and total 30 35 patents which is very very less so i think from various concept point of view whether it is nano composite whether it is antimicrobial whether it is temperature and all of them are very relevant to india i think india is one country where all of them are very relevant you look at energy reduction you look at anti pollution look at sustainability color change is of course like you know it is more of a decorative phenomena 
but if you look at other properties apart from the color chain all of them are very very important for india so i think that is the opportunity i want to tell all the technology lover here and since like you know this is a institute where a lot of research happen i thought let me show this uh, new technology which are available to us so that's all i wanted to talk about and uh, any question any body want to ask uh, or anybody want to work in any area like you know we can definitely even for the students we can create those opportunities i am i am inviting a student to come to asian paint we can create a project and then we can work on that thank you very much yeah so we have worked on it and uh, actually we we are working on it for last 4 to 5 years to be very frank but only nano titanium will give this another uh, uh, performance or some polymers have to be no both see one of the reason why we have not launched this product i tell you frankly cost no not only the cost actually one thing we have to be aware that when this nano technology or nano tio2 is reacting with say sox or nox or carbon monoxide what is what is being made out of that and how it is getting discharged so when we started this project around 5 years back the compound which is a outcome of that reaction is far more dangerous than carbon monoxide so that is why we did not launch the product now there are new technologies available when and that is where your question is very valid that is it only nano tio2 or it is something else so you have to add something else along with the binder so that the resultant product is not toxic so that is where like you know it is taking as time we want to launch this year if everything goes all right but to answer your question we are working on that no this is what we are designing is only for exterior it's not for interior and it is basically for the townships so if you have township which is along the highway there like you know we can apply the meters and we can demonstrate the carbon monoxide level the sulfur dioxide level sulfur trioxide level to show to the people that what kind of impact this coating i have seen that in china if you go to shanghai there are lot of lot of housing societies who display in bold letter that this is this is the carbon monoxide level outside the building and this is carbon monoxide level inside the building so that awareness has to come to india but uh, it is purely from the exterior use point of view not from interior no there are two types of coating one is sacrificial with chalks like you know there is a company in thailand called toa paint i don't know how many yeah exactly yeah but the technology what we are looking at is based on silicate where there won't be any chalking sir but again we have tried silicate before 20 years the problem is the stability matlab with the additives which are yeah yeah but uh, again the silicate technology what i understand maybe the study is not to the depth what we all are currently having is the climate doesn't work okay the, the application technology 
or the, the uh, application will have to be too specialized because it requires certain ambient temperature or moisture or yeah. control and all that which is very very uh, becoming a very small or very difficult market I presume so because the silicate coatings cannot be applied like what polymer coatings are being applied today that is what I understand now I, I don't want to name the product I just want to inform you that we are having a product in the market which we are selling for last two years and we are selling hmm? around 20,000 KL of that product every year Correct. in every geography without any problem. What is the brand name? So we will understand better. <laughs> so, uh, because we are on technical grounds. It is not... Uh, no, you made me. I will tell you because uh, that is that is our... No, uh, our great secret. Yeah, protect technology. No, but it is... See, that is where innovation can make a difference. Ten years back, people could not imagine that you can use silicate as a normal decorative coating inside the house because you need certain humidity, you need certain moisture condition, you need stabilizer which are very expensive in India. Today you can design a coating which is like you know as a technology it is cheaper than a standard acrylic emulsion. So, I am not talking of interiors, I am talking of exteriors. When I make silicate paints which are very common in Canada and all these yeah. places. Yeah. Interiors we also tried Definitely, there is a superior advantage than this, uh, what you call the normal style interior. No, for exterior, the mechanism is same. So, the new technology which is developed there, whether you use an interior exterior does not make a difference. So, we can very well use it without any problem. Yes. And as a person who has been so deeply into researching and on the functionality based paper that you presented, much I hope not, and a lot of beautiful data that you presented today, how long do you think that it will take for the thing to change and the fulcrum to move to paint and coatings being primarily seen as a contributor of a certain function to life and lifestyle? In it, do you yeah. see that happening? No, oh, wherever I mean, even at a global level, do you see the shift happening anytime soon, or do you see it happening at all? Or it should, because they can do a lot more than just make a room. Absolutely. And we have also been a part of the industry, like we've been for 40, 50 yeah. years now. Yeah. So we really also feel that, and also in Goa at the conference, this was one of the key uh, ideas that we wanted to bring about innovation. Uh, as more as a functional product and which can really enhance uh, not only structures but life and human life. Uh, so how far do you think this change will take time? I, no, thanks uh, Priya, it's a great question and I think people like you who are into industry can only ask this kind of question. See, according to me, this change will happen in next 10 years. Really? Bravo. That is, that is what I feel. And I will tell you the reason also why I feel so. Like, you know, if you look at coating industry last 40 years, even if you look at emulsions or even if you look at binders, there is very little happened in that area. Now, when I look at nano composites, actually graphene is not a much explored material. And Unfortunately, it has become more of a buzzword rather than technology. If I use graphene and understand graphene and make graphene at a reasonable cost, it can do wonders about functionalities. And it is not single functionality, it is multi-functionality additive. But I think it will take time now people are getting into graphene oxide or they want to convert graphite into a multi-layer address. Uh, some three four layer graphene which give part of the property from the anti-corrosive point of view or from the flexibility point of view but I think this change is definitely going to happen and the companies who are progressive they will bring that change because if I want to innovate like you know I can talk about myself 
in Asian paint, if I want to innovate, how do I differentiate? So today, people are knowledgeable. They, even ladies, when they want to buy paint for their household, they search enough through internet. They understand all the chemistries. Whether they understand nitty gritty or not, that is a separate issue. But they know what to ask, like you know, pure acrylic. Now, how the hell pure acrylic work? Nobody knows. But they will say whether it is pure acrylic or wham acrylic or a style acrylic. Those kind of questions people ask. And you have to answer them. But tomorrow, when you start giving functionalities, you don't have to answer those questions. Your functionality will speak. People will ask for the functionality. And I think that is the opportunity for all of us. So to answer your question, I think I think in less than 10 years we will see that change yeah. even in it. sustainable coating, actually water-based coatings are very detrimental from the sustainability point of view. It is only water which is sustainable, nothing else. All the polymer is all made out of petroleum. You look at alkyd resin, 70 percent is oil. And, and today with polysaccharide technology, you can incorporate water even without compromising the gloss. So, like you know, people confuse from the water, water base not necessarily is a sustainable coating. So I think more and more people are going to move towards high solid coating or the raw material which are from the natural sources or from the renewable resources that is going to make it more sustainable. And water based petroleum is, is, is not sustainable. Uh, for for your information. What was the second question? Regarding the Europe and China. Yeah. Because they already have more advanced sustainability, whereas in India we still see the challenges. So what do you think like for India? What is the biggest See in India I don't know. To be very frank, I don't know the answer. Because uh, India is a country where people were not even using paint five years back. So at least people started using paint where my per capita consumption is going up from two hundred and fifty grams to to 1 liter and 2 liter and 2.5 liter and 5 liter, 6 liter. So it was not happening. So at least people started using paint. That itself is a very big change. Even if, even now you go to villages, people don't paint outside. They don't see any utility in painting from outside. They want to paint from inside, but outside they leave the bricks. So if, even if government want to enforce some of the regulations, I think there is a maturation time. Indian market need to mature. So, what I was talking about in Europe and China is about the specification on interior air quality. See, today, lot of people get excited when they hear low VOC coating. According to me, if you ask me, low VOC coating are more dangerous than high VOC coating. Now you will ask why. Now, low VOC coating, when you apply, inside the house. See what is the GS11 and European norm on, on low VOC coating? That your boiling point of the solvent has to be at a certain number, whether it is 280 degree centigrade or 250 degree centigrade. Now if you apply, so how you manipulate VOC? By boiling point. So now you have used high boiling point solvent in your paint and you have an opportunity to use low boiling point to conform to the VOC norm. 
Now where you are using 275 to 80 degree centigrade VOC uh, boiling point material, it evaporates faster because the boiling point is more and you get rid of those vapors maybe in 6 month, 8 month time. Now instead of using 280 degree centigrade, you use 240 degree centigrade solvent which is going to remain in the air for 5 years. So we, earlier where you are suffering only for 6 months, you suffer for 5 years now. What Europe has done and what China has done, they are not worried about boiling point. They are worried about the total vapors which are coming in the air per year. So every year they get monitored and there is a specification requirement. So if you comply to that, you are making your product green in real sense. And I think we are far from there. It is going to take time. So this is like, you know, these are some, this is very different way of thinking and, and I think somebody have to really go and uh, make representation to the government to, to like, you know, I think there are enough people who can afford those kind of paint. But unfortunately, there is not a forum who is pushing this thing. And maybe at some point of time, maybe IPA or, or some association will go and talk to them. <coughs> Anybody else? Yes, sir. Any idea? Actually, this this one. Huh? I will tell you about the data. I I did some study last year. I think it was around six six point five kilos per capita in India now. Uh, but it is like you know, uh, it may be little bit misleading because it includes the tuna and uh, uh, and putti. Yeah. So that putti is really like you know it is going in a different origin at all and changing the whole number. Yeah, it because be, it used to be 50 grams 50 years ago for anyone in India. No, but it has definitely gone more than 5 kilo. Definitely. Yeah, the US used to be 24 kg and yeah. 18 kg. They are still like that. It's not changed much there. No sir, it is around 6 kilo now in India, but as she said, people are people are depositing patti like anything on the walls. So that is really changing the conjunction pattern in India. <laughs> is sustainable? Patti? Yeah. Cement patti sustainable like you know, from the VOC point of view, it is zero VOC because you use only water. But from the sustainability point of view, I think it is a bomb. You use 20% cement, which is the highest energy consuming material, which is there. So from that point of view, definitely it is not sustainable. Alka enamel patti, what people used to make by mixing chalk and enamel is far more sustainable than cement patti. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for listening. I will request uh, Mr. Prakash Dhapare to say a word of thanks. Good evening. First of all, thank you very much to our today's guest, Dr. Uh, Sri Raju Goelji, for accepting our invitations to and to deliver lecture on a very interesting topic, functional technology in architectural coating. Now I will request our Color Society President to presenting memento to Raju Gavalji. Thank you very much to Professor A.B. Pandit, Vice Chancellor ICT Mumbai for allowing us to conduct Latte Sri C.J. Bhumkar Memorial Lecture in this auditorium. Thank you very much to Mr. Professor Dr. S.T. Muske, HOD Department of Polymer and Surface Engineering, ICT Mumbai for allowing the Color Society to use their premises to carry the activity. At last, but not the least, thank you very much to all audience to attend Latte Sri C.J. Bhumkar Memorial Lecture on Functional Technology in Architectural Coatings. Thank you very much.